Do you know him? Do you know him? The one. Hallelujah. Let's give it unto the Lord and the house for this man of God whose God is taking places, taking all over the world by his grace. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your son that you have used to be a blessing to us this afternoon. I will pray for him that God will take him beyond his imaginations. In the name of Jesus, he that was with him in the low moments, in those low years, you will also be with him in the high moments. In the name of Jesus. The best is yet to come for you, sir. More grace to your ministry. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for honoring us in the house this morning. And coming all the way from the United Kingdom to be a blessing. And blessings will, you will continue to be in Jesus' name. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. And I'm giving the, these thanks on behalf of our father in the house. Who is... Not here with us, but he's here in spirit, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Kunle Omoto Show. That's a set man and woman that God has put over this assembly. And they are in Nigeria right now, but they are with us in spirit. Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are happy that today is the 15th of December, and you are living to witnesses. Praise the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So long. God, ancient of days, the first and the last, the word, the truth, the life, the rock of ages, the beginning in himself, the one who has no hand, the almighty God, unchangeable changer, the one who is the God of the great turnaround. 
The one who can turn situations around. Father, we worship you this afternoon. Thank you for who you are. You are not a man that you should lie. Nor the son of man that you should repent. As high as the heavens are above the heart, so are your thoughts higher than our thoughts and your ways than our ways. We extol you this afternoon. Please accept our thanks and our worship in the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise you, the Lord. You may be seated. This afternoon, we are going to be looking at a topic titled Preparing for the Next Level. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor you are going to the next level. Are you prepared? What did they say? Praise the Lord. Preparing for the next level. The word next level, the phrase next level means that there is a present level. Praise the Lord. There is a present level and there is another level to get to. It means that one is living a particular level of state for another. For example, someone who is a single can leave that level to become married. And it's, I, I hear you, God, we honor your faith this morning. As you say amen, everyone, we honor your faith in the name of Jesus. One who is called barren can live a state of barrenness to becoming fruitful. We know the story of Anna very well. She was once called barren. But by the time God finished with her, the Bible says she had boys. She asked for one son. Say, Father, if you just prove yourself and just give me one son, I will give him back to you. By the time God finished with her, <laughs> I can imagine how Penina was seeing her. So, the one who was called barren can live a level of barrenness to becoming fruitful. The one who is currently jobless can live that level to becoming employed. And can also leave the level of employment to becoming an employer. Yeah. Praise ye the Lord. Someone can be a normal believer. A casual Christian. A child of God who has surrendered his life to Jesus. And the Bible says that those that believe in his name shall be saved. So they, they will be saved. But they can leave that level of a distant relationship to a level of commitment and become a disciple. That's a change of levels. Praise the Lord. Someone can leave a level of sickness of being addressed as a sick person, a sick man, a sick woman to becoming a healthy man or a healthy woman. So when you think about the phrase next level, you are thinking about a movement, a change, a transfer. And so because it's called next level, it can either be upward or, are you following me? I know why you didn't say the other one. Because you don't, you don't want to claim it. Which is okay. We act by faith. It can be upward or downward. When it's upward, the movement is in a higher direction. It's just like a plane that just, you know, started to fly. At a point, 
the pilot will announce that now we are above, we are 10,000 square feet above sea level. It moves in a higher direction. And you can think about a higher direction in terms of a promotion. Somebody is a level one in a particular title at a place of work and they move to level two. That is the next level situation in their life. It can be progressive. You are thinking about it when you are thinking about upward movement as progressive. Praise the Lord. A child is in one grade this year. The next year is in a higher grade. It's progressing. If a child is in one grade and the following year is in a, a level lower than that grade, it's retrogressing. There's a it's a retrogression. So when you think about the downward movement, the downward, we talked about upward and downward, is movement in a lower direction. And there's always a reason for it. In the case of that child that I mentioned, as an example, it may be that they haven't passed that level. Or they are at the level of the, a, a grade lower. So to help the child to catch up before it's too late, the teacher may say, based on his performance, it may be better for him to repeat this grade. He will lose a year, but he will have gained a lot if he's focused and you parents do certain things for him to help him. And then be able to catch up. Some people even get, they, they get higher, they, they progress so fast that at the level they are, they are already operating beyond that level, above that level. And so when they are being evaluated, they are recommended for a higher level because they can handle it. And I want you to pay attention to the word handle because they can handle it. Because the Bible says that God will not give us, there are no temptation that come to mind that we cannot handle. The temptation that I'm going through is such that God has equipped me to handle. Once it's becoming too much for me, he will step in. The Holy Spirit steps in. So we are preparing for the next level. The Bible says in Psalm 76 verse 75, Psalm 75 verse 6, and verse 7 says, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down and set it up. The one that he puts down, what happens to that person? Is it progressive or retrogression? It's retrogression. And God in his own infinite ways... Has the ultimate authority to put up and to bring down. Praise the Lord. But his word says to us that he has his thoughts towards us are of good and not of evil. So God is always thinking a progressive thought for us. He always thinking to take us to that place of expected end. Praise the Lord. And I would follow the Holy Spirit as he decides to move with us this morning. He's always thinking progressive of us. He's always thinking to take us to that place of glory. That place of our expected end. Praise the Lord. And in this season, we just finished the Holy Ghost Congress in Nigeria. I don't know how many of us were following it. The theme this year is the great turn around. And the great turn around, only God can do that. Praise the Lord. It's not a regular turning. It's just like going from a level 1 to a level 100. A human being cannot help another human being to do that. Only God. God is the one that can accelerate and decelerate at any rate. He chooses. But it's what says to us that it's thoughts towards us are of good and not of evil.
to take us to an expected end. Jeremiah 11:29. We know the story of Daniel. We're going to be looking at so when we talk about the upward movement and downward, there was the story of Daniel. Daniel lived a progressive life. He lived a life where he experienced a level and another higher level. But certain things happened in between. The Bible recalls that Daniel was given a gift of dreams, interpretation of dreams. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2, Are you there? Daniel chapter 2. If you can give us verse 3. Verse 3. And the king said unto him, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. This was a, an issue that the, the king was going through. He had a revelation. And so, the, what the, the information he saw in that dream troubled him. And so he was looking for an interpreter. And he searched through the land. And he called, verse 4, it says, Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. These are magicians. They were not operating in the power of God. By the time the, the king told them the dream, they could not tell him his, the interpretation. They didn't know the meaning. You can give us verse 10, please. You will see what they said when they could not tell him the meaning. They said, the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the heart that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that has asked such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. So they believe that based on the way they are operating, the level that they are operating, there is no other person who can solve the king's problem. But God proved them wrong. Praise the Lord. God did what? He proved them wrong. You will see in that verse 11. Give us verse 11. It says, it is a real thing that the king required. And there is none other than sh that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. They did not have the understanding that the children of God carry the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. They were not carrying the spirit of God, so they, they, were, they were limited in their understanding. They felt that they were the ultimate. And I hope that there's nobody here in the house, and those that are watching us online, who already feels that I am the ultimate, I'm at my ultimate level. There's no need for improvement. There's no need to move forward. There is no need for changing status. This is where I am. This is the best I can be. And this is it. As far as this generation is concerned, this is it. Praise the Lord. In fact, culturally from where we come from, some people will talk to you when you are discussing with them. They will say, oh, we have finished work. It is you people that are to continue. This, this is, I'm not going beyond. I don't know if, whether they asked God and God told them that is what it is. Because you must be depending on an to make that kind of statement. Say for me, no, no, no. If it's education, I'm done with education. At this level, I am done. Meanwhile, God has another purpose, a better purpose. So they were looking at their own level as the ultimate. So you see in verse 12, and follow me. The Bible says, for this cause, the king was angry and very furious. Why? Because he had a problem that could not be solved. At least as far as what the discussion is having with these magicians, the Chaldeans. He has a problem that there is no solution. So he was very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. That if this is the best we can have in this land, you people are good for nothing. You are just warming benches 
and filling up the atmosphere, you are not doing anything good for humanity. Because you cannot make this thing, you cannot make the situation I am in better. You cannot give me clarity. Verse 12 that we read. So he was very furious with them. And he commanded that. And in those days when the king commands, what happens? They just go to, it's, 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 it's the law. It goes into effect. Nowadays, they have to go through a process of, they go to the house, they go to the senate, they have to talk about it. In those days, there's nothing like that. It gives an order, it's put in place. That's it. Fast forward to verse 46. You can give us verse 46. It goes a long verse. It's a long chapter. By the time the king came in contact with Daniel, <laughs> and Daniel was able to give him the interpretation of the dream, in verse 46, the Bible records that the king fell upon his face in all his majesty and worshipped Daniel. And commanded that they should offer an oblation, like an offering, and sweet odors unto him. Verse 47. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods, and a lot of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldest reveal this secret. Verse 48. Then the king made Daniel a great man. Follow me. Daniel started before the, the interpretation of that dream. He was just an ordinary man. But the Bible records, by the time he finished with the king, the king had made him a great man. And gave him many great gifts. And made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. And the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. That's not a small title. It's not a small position. It just, it's like the time of Joseph. When he was made the second in command. In that time, Egypt was like the whole world. And to be in second in command at that time. So Daniel became a great man. Just because he was able to solve a problem, his level changed. He, was, he became an overseer, taking, over, taking care of the whole province. It's just like you taking care of the whole New York State. I hope we all know that New York State is not just the city, the five boroughs. When you look on the map, you will see New York State. New York State is not as small geographically as it is as, as what we are seeing in the five boroughs. So if we have always been traveling through the five boroughs, we have not really seen New York State. If you go up north, you'll be able to see how far away, how big the land of New York State is. So many other counties beyond those five boroughs that we are you know, very, very, in, you know, much in contact with. So he was overseeing the whole province of Babylon. Now, look at verse 49. The Bible says something there that Daniel asked for. You know, Daniel was not the only one in Babylon at that time. He had other Hebrew boys that were with him. Then Daniel requested of a king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon is left hand. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. What am I trying to say there? Or what's God trying to say there? Because Daniel's level changed for the better, the people around his friends, so to speak, the people that carry God like him, that carry the spirit of God like him, also enjoyed. Praise the Lord. Who are you hanging around with? There's a common idea that show me your friend and I know who you are. If you are an accomplice, there's also something that they call in crime, an accomplice of crime. 
If you are working with the people who feel that they are pauper, paupers, you start thinking like a pauper. And because you are thinking like a pauper, you, it's, way be, it's way below what ex, God is expecting from your life. Boys, enjoyed recognition, promotion. They changed level just because of what happened to Daniel. They knew their God. The Bible records in that Daniel chapter 6 that when they had confrontation with the king also, they knew who their God was. And they told the king, no, there's no need to go back home and think about what you are telling me. I, I have the answer for you. Now, I will not bow. No, because you promoted us some years back doesn't mean that you are not our Alpha and Omega. You are not the one who define our life. Praise the Lord. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. This is the God we serve. He's able to lift us up. He has never failed, even if he doesn't answer now. He's still on the throne. Praise the Lord. Preparing for the next level. So Daniel went from being a man to a great man. We know the story of David very well. The Bible says in Psalm 78 verse 70. Psalm 78 verse 70. He chose David also. And if the media is too slow for you, just pick up your Bible and follow me. He chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfold. Verse 71. From following the hills great with young, he brought him to feed, to feed Jacob his people and his inheritance. If you can give us that verse 71 in the new living place. He took David from tending the hills and lambs and made him the shepherd of Jacob's descendants. God's own people, Israel. He made him from being a shepherd boy. Even his family, they couldn't see the greatness in David. Praise the Lord. They wanted him to remain an errand boy. He's the baby of the house. You know, even from our own culture, you know, some of our cultures, when somebody is the baby of the house, they send them on errand everywhere. They'll be sending them on her as if they don't have a great destiny. As if they are a second citizen. Meanwhile, this man, this young man, David, was going to be the one that will eventually save Israel. Praise the Lord. God took him from the level of a shepherd boy, errand boy, and made him a king. That's an accelerated promotion. It's not level by, it's not even the level one, two, three. It's not logical. Praise the Lord. How is it logical? Because some of us are very, very strong in our mind. Our brain works very, very well, which is okay. But when you are going to work with God and work successfully with God, you must cause your brain to bow to the spirit. How is it logical for me and you? One smooth stone thrown to the face of a giant and he stuck and he fell on his face front. Is it logical? Praise the Lord. It's not logical. So when God is going to change levels, he will do it in such a way that it will not be logical. So that you will know that it's not man, that man that wrote a note for you that did it. No. God made all things work together for good. Praise the Lord. Let's look at a downward movement. It's also a change of level. There's a level now and the level goes back down. I gave us an illustration of a, of a boy who repeats a grade, has lost a year, 
but he can still catch up. If he's in a very early stage of his education, it's so easy to catch up, to close the gap. Even if it's not, have you seen dropouts? People don't have a high school diploma and become so successful in life. How did they do it? What happened? Have you seen people who are illiterate, who can't release, they can't articulate a sentence in English language? It's not their strongest point, but they are very successful. What happened? It's God that makes time and chance happen for them all. Let's look at the downward movement. Nebuchadnezzar, we know him very well. He was a king. And in Daniel chapter 4, if you can give it to us, Daniel chapter 4, verse 4, please. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house. Follow me, I'm flourishing in my palace. Everything was good. I saw a dream which made me afraid. And the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Very similar to the experience he had in chapter 2. So this king sees a lot of dreams. God loved him, but he wasn't paying attention. Verse, verse 6. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Verse 7. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, and they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. And my mind went back to chapter 2. You already tried these people. You tried them. They couldn't tell you. Why are you wasting time calling them again? But that's not where I'm going. Verse 8. Verse 8, please. But at the last, Daniel came in before me. That's what you should have done in the first place. A waste of time. Calling those soothsayers. Whose name was Belshazzar? According to the name of my God, in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And before him I told the dream. Saying, O Belshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the Holy God is in thee, and no secret trouble at thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Verse 9, verse 10. Those were the visions of my head in my, my bed I saw. And behold, a tree in the midst of the heart, and the height thereof was great. So he started to give the dream. How the tree grew in verse 11, I was strong, and the height thereof reached the heavens. The leaves thereof were fair. He kept describing the dream to Daniel. It's the Lord. Verse 13, it says, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off its branches. Shake off his leaves, scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his, of his roots in the heart. Don't kill him. Even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the heart. Let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. That seven times means seven years. So everything that will happen to, that, uh, to, to Nebuchadnezzar, God had revealed in the dream, bad things. But he was also a partner in the reality of this dream. <coughs> In verse 17, this matter is, is by the, the 
by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basest, the basest of men. Daniel explaining <coughs> verse, verse 18. Let's go on. Verse 18. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the Holy Ghost is in thee. Then Daniel told him the interpretation in verse 19. The Bible says that Daniel was astonished for one hour. Why? Because of the content of the message. That this man, you are going to be a beast. You are going to end up to the level of an animal. You will move kingdoms. In fact, scientifically, they say they are kingdoms. You will move from the kingdom of the human beings to animals. So he interpreted the dream to him. If you can give us, that's verse 19, next verse please. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven and the side thereof to all the earth, verse 21, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof, and was meat for her, under which the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the falls of the heaven had their habitation, verse 22. It is thou, O king, you are the one. Thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown, and reached unto heaven, and thy dominion to the hand of the heart. Verse 23. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven, saying, Heal the tree down. And destroy, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the heart, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of the hev of heaven, and let its portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over. In verse 24. This is the interpretation, O king. And I like the way Daniel did it. Line by line, he was giving it to him. So that because there's so much information in the dream. So that he doesn't miss any part of it. This is the interpretation, O king. This is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King. Daniel was not afraid to give him the bad news. But even at that stage, it was still, it, it can still be repaired. Verse 25 that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. Seven times shall pass over thee. Till thou know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. And giveth it to whomsoever he will. Remember where we started from. That promotion cometh not from the east. From the south. And warehouse they commanded to leave the stump of the tree fruit three roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do. So, the kingdom will still be maintained, but you will change status. You will change status for seven years. And it's going to be downward. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, because this is what's going to happen. Don't try to figure it out that, well, does this make sense? No. This is coming from God to you, and the Spirit of God is in me, and this is the message. So just take it and do the needful. And break off thy sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. That if, even if you show kindness and you do the right things, God can change his mind. Verse 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end, I want us to pay attention to it. At the end of 12 months, hmm, 
It wasn't even too long ago that he had a dream. It's just like having a dream last December 2018. And then the dream flashes back to your memory. Now, at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, It's not this great Babylon that I built for the house of the kingdom by the midst of my power and for the honor of my majesty. So I'm doing like this. I can imagine the way it was stomping around, like, you know. Uh. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is disparted from thee. You had been forewarned. You have been given signs. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. Verbatim, the way Daniel, you know, explained it to him. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same heart was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. It wasn't delayed. And he was driven from men and did eat grass. His, his, his brain turned. Our brains will not turn to the bad side in Jesus' name. There is an adage from a, I think it's from the Caribbean culture that says, if the head is correct, the whole body is okay. The whole body is correct. If the head is correct. So his brain turned and it was, the brain was degraded to the level of an animal. The man was in a palace enjoying royalty became a beast. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever we are going to do that will make the grace and the glory of God to depart from us. God, may God constrain us from doing them in the mighty name of Jesus. So we saw the, the problem of Nebuchadnezzar. This pride was eventually what brought him down. And he was also not sensitive. It wasn't only pride. He was not sensitive in the spirit to understand what God was saying to him. God had already showed him what was going to happen. Praise the Lord. You remember the story of Ezekiah when he was sick. And God told the prophet to go and tell him that this sickness is unto death. You are going to die. And Ezekiah said, ah, God, I've served you. I've, I've worshipped you. I've done things for you. Why would you say that I'm going to die? You can't add to my life. I need to live. The, the, the dead cannot praise you. And God honored it. God said, go and tell him again. You that went to give the wrong mes uh, the message in the first time that was not pal uh, beneficial, palatable to him, go and give him the good news. I tell him, I've had 15 more years to his life. Nebuchadnezzar was not sensitive. When we are at a particular level in our lives, we have to do some, some assessment. Spiritually, mentally do an assessment what is god saying now why am i here why am i here for this period what is the next level what's the next level what where am i going next praise the lord we know the story of saul his own problem was partial obedience in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, the Bible says that God had already made up his mind about Saul. That Saul, you know, even when Samuel was still kind of passionate and being, you know, sympathizing for him, God said, no, I've made up this man. He didn't do what I asked him to do. I've taken the kingdom from him. Partial obedience. And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him. 
from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn, thy horn with oil and go and I will send it to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. This man, and what happened in, in the first chapter, the chapter before chapter 16, God told him, go and destroy the Amalekites. Destroy all of them. Don't take anything from there. Don't. Then when he got there, he, he, was, he killed them, but he, he took uh, a, a hug. And he took the best of the things they saw there. Brought those things. Some of us may have brought things into our homes where we, that we are not supposed to have brought in. And they are the genesis of the problem. Somebody gave us something or we found something somewhere we didn't ask questions. We just took it. Or we saw something free of charge. We like a lot of free things. It's on clearance. Yes, it's good. I also do a lot of sales on clearance. But it's free. It's not really free. Nothing is free. Except the blood of Jesus. That he gave. And even that wasn't free. For us, it's free to us. We didn't pay for it. But it cost God his own son. Nothing is free. Somebody is paying somewhere for it. Praise the Lord. So, Saul had partial obedience problem. He was trying to help God. And some of us try to help God too. He says, God says, you are going to be in this for two years. He says, no, I can't. I'll cut it short for six months. Six months. I will do what uh, sister said, said I should do. We will cut it down to six months. We think we are smart. We cut it down. Meanwhile, we miss out on other things that God wants us to learn. When God took Moses to the wilderness... At the age of 40. He stayed there for 40 years more. But God wanted to, to, to take him through certain things. To prepare him for the assignment ahead of him. 40 years. He wasn't, part of, he wasn't with his people. So this morning or this afternoon. Thinking about the next level. What's the next for me? It's the end of the year. It may not be, you know, the end of an episode for you. It, an episode, but it crossing calendar years. Or it may be the end of that episode, and it's also aligning with the calendar year. How can I prepare for the, my next level? Because we need to prepare. If somebody is going to be great, God has ordained you to be great. You have to prepare for that greatness. Otherwise, one will not be able to maintain the success. Praise the Lord. When the success comes, it will be so, so unexpected that, you know, some people, some people that play the lottery, and it's not, it's not godly to play the, the lotto thing, the thing that they, the, what do they call it now? How many millions is it now? Because they, they publish it every day. Mega millions, right? They hit it. <laughs> they see millions. What? They've never handled millions before. They've been playing the lotto for 20 years. They never hit it. They've been playing the lotto they are never prepared for if they hit it. What are they going to do? How are they going to handle taxes? How are they going to handle family? How are they going to handle their own well-being? Making sure that they don't lose their mind. Because some, some money can come into some people's hands and they can lose their mind. Like literally losing their mind. Praise the Lord. How can I prepare for my next level? Number one, we have to acknowledge and accept the sovereignty of the Almighty God. We are all here this afternoon by the grace of every single day, every single moment. We are who we are by the grace of we must never forget. And we must acknowledge it and accept it. 
So it's one thing to acknowledge that, yes, that is true. It's another thing to accept it and say, yes, that is what it is for me. I'm standing here by the grace of God. I have this number of years to my name by the grace of God. I have these uh, educational qualifications by the grace of God. We must acknowledge it because he's the only one who does it. In that Psalm 75 or 6 to 7 that we read. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says, and unto, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord, our God is the king eternal. He's immortal. You can't kill him. You can't make him. You can't manipulate him. You can't do anything to him. He's invisible. He's a spirit. He's the only wise God. No matter how smart we get, our wisdom cannot be compared with the wisdom of God. It's not the same level. He's the only wise God. We ask God to increase us in wisdom, divine wisdom, on a daily basis. It's a good prayer point. But we must know that he is the embodiment of the wisdom of God. Christ himself is the wisdom, wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. No matter how wise we get, we should still know that God is the only wise God. We must acknowledge and accept his sovereignty. Number two, we must seek the Lord for direction. We must seek the Lord for direction. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. You can give it to us in the New Living. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. I love all who love me. Those who search will surely find me. When you search God, when you search for God, when you look for him, it's because you need direction. It's because it's important to you. Because you want to come in with it. You want to know what's going on. Praise the Lord. Even in the area of employment. You just don't apply to any job. There are some jobs that you qualify for. But inside is a lot of work. Inside is a lot of pain. How will you know from the job description? No, you're not going to know. They will tell you the expectations. But God is the only one that knows that that job is a death trap. God is the only one that knows that that job is going to prosper you. God is, going to, God is the only one that knows that that job is going to give you peace. God is the only one that knows that that job is not going to cage you down. Some people have accepted jobs that they can't go forward. They can't, they can't, their cage is a captivity in itself. They can't get out of it. Seek the Lord for direction. Number three, envision your next level. Envision it. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. It says, I will stand. I, this is one of the verses in the Bible that I love. It says, I will stand upon my watch. And set me upon the tower. And we watch to see. What he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse 2. Verse 2. There's a lot of um, I, I um, buildings in Manhattan. Intentionally. And some of them when you go on top. You can see God. You can see the, ma the mightiness of God. He says, I will stand upon my watch. Very, very powerful verse. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. 
Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Praise the Lord. And there's somebody here in the house, the Lord is saying to you, you are saying, when am I going to get married? God is saying to you, it will surely come, it will not tarry. If you will stand, in that verse 1, if you will stand upon your watch and see what he will say to you, you will be able to see the vision. And it will not tarry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number four, obtain divine wisdom. We talked about wisdom of God moments ago. Obtain divine wisdom. Proverbs chapter 12, chapter 8, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence. And find out knowledge of witty inventions. Verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Verse 14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. This is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Verse 17. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. If you give us the verse 14 in the New Living, and that really moved me. He says, common sense and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. Common sense. So we talked about logical, right? When you are thinking logically, you are thinking of common sense. Does it make sense? But God's wisdom is telling us that that common sense belong, is inside him. Praise the Lord. The sense, the most common of all senses is inside of him. He resides in him. It's in his, in his own wisdom. Praise the Lord. And success belongs to me. Insight. This world is, what color now? Violet, right? Or what color is this? It's purple violet. It's deep purple violet. Insight and strength are mine. This wall, as I'm looking at it, it looks concrete. It looks like a concrete wall, doesn't it? But inside it is sheet rock. This side is a sheet rock. That side that has those bricks there, that's concrete. That's, that's harder than this one. But the person that's just coming and just being carried away with the color and bumps into that side, we feel more pain than this side. He says, the insight belongs to me. The common sense of this thing belongs to me. What you are going to do in January and you are going to be successful in the new year belongs to me. Praise the Lord. The Lord give us more understanding in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Sometimes in our day-to-day -day work, in our day-to-day -day activities, we get carried away with the wisdom of the world. And we allow the wisdom of the world to overshadow the wisdom of God that's available to us. That's not a good strategy. Praise the Lord. Somebody can rush to you and say they want to get you to quickly do something. Pause. In fact, the Bible says that the man of God does not make haste. Every time I make haste to do something, 
I'm under a lot of pressure and it's not the Holy Spirit. They can rush us on Monday morning. They rush us like, go, 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 go. The phone is ringing. Everything is bubbling. Calm down. I will stand upon the tower and watch. If that one minute, you'll be surprised that if you calm down and that within a, some seconds, the Holy Spirit can minister to you right there. Because he knows that you are in a situation of decision making. Say, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I found myself in a situation where I needed to sign some documents. And I was under a lot of pressure to sign those documents. As I sat down, the Holy Spirit told me that to read every line. I said, read every line. I'm so, that day I was so busy. Read every line. I heard very clearly in the afternoon. It's not, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't praying. I, wasn't, I was doing work. Read every line. I looked at the pages. I said, read every line. Okay. Started to read every line. I got to it was I didn't even get to page page ten before I saw problem. I saw problem facing me like Lord, Holy Spirit, thank you. I kept reading. I saw another problem. By the time I finished the document, I put it down. And I just said, what would happen to me without the Holy Spirit? How would I live my life? What would I be doing? Self? I was trying to figure it out. If I don't have the Holy Spirit, what would happen to me? Praise the Lord. Sign, sign, sign. Mm -mm. No, wait. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all thy getting, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom based on the word of God. And who gives it? James chapter 1 verse 5. Who's going to give you the wisdom? I told you that the, there's the wisdom of the world. It's smart. It's logical. It's, it looks okay. It's, it looks okay. But sometimes it will get you in trouble a lot of times. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you, did he say, if any of black people, no, anyone, any of you believers, it doesn't matter where you come from. You are a believer, you believe in me. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men, it doesn't have reservation. You're asking for a good thing, you can have it. And upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. It gives generously wisdom. Praise the Lord. If you ask him for pride, he will not answer you. He will not. God doesn't give you pride, because pride leads to destruction. But if you have asked the devil for pride, he will give it to you. Oh, for nothing. You don't need to pay for it. Praise the Lord. Liberally. If any one of you lack wisdom, but that person must understand that they lack wisdom. And come humbly to God. Number five. Have a good plan and commit it unto the Lord. Have a good plan and commit it unto the Lord. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 5. If you can give us the new living, Proverbs 21, verse 5. It says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. May we not take shortcuts in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 14, verse 28, talking about having a good plan and committing it to the Lord. Luke 14, 28 
For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Sitting down. I'm standing by my watch, hearing what he's going to say to me. You must have a good plan and commit it unto the Lord. Even when it looks good, you must still commit it unto the Lord. Proverbs 3 verse 5, Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own. In all your ways acknowledge and he shall direct thy Commit it into the hand of God, even when the plan looks okay. Father, what is in it? Show me. Can I move forward? Give me a sign. Talk to me. Point me to your word. Give me a green light. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Preparing for the next level. Work hard at it, number six. Work hard at it. Proverbs 12, verse 14. New living, please. Proverbs 12, 14. It says, wise words bring many benefits, and hard work brings rewards. Praise the Lord. When they were building the wall, the Bible says that they built the wall in record time. The wall of Jerusalem. Because... Uh, what's the name of this guy now? Nehemiah, thank you, ma. Nehemiah had the passion, the vision for it. He knew that God desires to have the world restored. And they built it in record time. Hard work brings rewards. Even when they were facing obstacles, people were trying to discourage him. Sambalat and Tobiah said, no, you people can't build this thing. Hard work brings reward. Work out at it as soon as you receive the backing of the Holy Spirit. Number seven, integrity to maintain it. Talking about the next level, you must have integrity to maintain it. Job chapter 2 verse 9. Job chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. Then said his wife unto him, Job, do you still have integrity, your integrity, cause God and die. Since you, are you still on this uh, being honest to God, loyal to God thing? See how your life is within a twinkle of an eye. Cause God, this, this thing is not working. <laughs> she didn't remember the time that it worked. When it was in prosperity, when she was enjoying all the goodies, she didn't remember. Since you still have integrity, this loyalty to God, But in verse 10, the Bible records that Job answered his wife. He says, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? In all these did not Job sin with his lips. So what is integrity? Because that word, you know, what is Integrity. It is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Moral uprightness. Quality. Virtue is a virtue. And in 2 Peter chapter, chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Praise the Lord. So we must have integrity to maintain it. If you are envisioning it to be great or at a particular level, next level, you must prepare now for it. Because when success is not as easy to maintain as failure. Praise the Lord. What, how much effort does failure need to maintain? When somebody is down, they are down. But when somebody is up there, Joseph had to maintain his integrity in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar saw the, the greatness of God in him, that God was with him, he was prospering and put him in a position of honor. 
He had to maintain his integrity. Even with that, he did not maintain it fully because Potiphar's wife was still able to get him to prison. Praise the Lord. He did not, he did not maintain that integrity with all his passion. He was thinking that it was just his child's play. He wasn't thinking ahead of Potiphar's wife, the worst case scenario. That every time I go and see this woman, I must have a witness. I must not go alone. Since the first time she had already showed the intent, her intent to me. I must, all, I must have a witness. He was still having situations where it was only him and the wife in a, in a room. Oh. The person who wants to come and bug a house in the night is wiser than the person who's sleeping, who doesn't know that the burglar is going to come in the, in the night. Because he's already ahead of thought. He's already knowing, okay, this is the shape of the window. This is how you go in. This is the egress. This is the... He's already thinking, meanwhile, the other person that owns the house is sleeping. He didn't even lock the door. He didn't lock the main door. Praise the Lord. Integrity is very, very important to maintaining the next level. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us, our help is around us. Our help is right beside us. But is this integrity issue? They've seen one or two things and they're not sure. Should I share this idea with this brother? Should I share it with this sister? Will they keep to their word? Meanwhile, it's an opportunity. It's a blessing right there. But is this integrity issue? Very, very important. The quality of being honest is a virtue in itself. God said that we should add to, it, to, to, to us integrity. Praise the Lord. Out of faith, virtue. And virtue, knowledge. Integrity is virtue. It's a virtue. I want us to talk to the Lord this afternoon, and I know I'm out of time. We are all at a particular level in our lives. God is the one that knows the end from the beginning. I want you to rise up on your feet and talk to the Lord this afternoon and say, Father, maybe your own discussion with God this morning are questions. I don't know. Based on where you are, if you re look at where you are right now and say, Father, we may have questions. Some of us are saying, Lord, this is what you have put before me and I'm ready to move with it. I need you to back me up. Talk to the Lord this afternoon. Take me to my next level of greatness. Take me to my next level of greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Let me get to that place of my greatness. Whatsoever you want me to learn at my present level to prepare me for where you are taking me to, Father, enable me to learn them. Enable me. Open my eyes to see them. Some of us, the reason why we are tiring at a particular level is because we have, not up, we have not taken in all of the information. Everything that God wants to equip us with so that we can survive in the next level. We have not taken it all in. That's why it's taking longer. Talk to the Lord this afternoon. Father, please, everything that I need to learn, whatsoever you want me to learn, at my present level, to prepare me from, for that next higher level you are taking me to. Father, please give it to me. Help me to learn. Help me to learn. Help me to know. Open my eyes. Paraventure, you are not even sure where you are now. Talk to the Lord. Father, I need you. Where, give me, I need some clarity. I need clarity on, on, on my life. How long am I going to be on this? What do you have for the remaining part of the year? What is your plan for next year for me? Let me fit into your plan, oh Lord. I cannot be directionless if I'm working with you. Father, please, what would you have me do? 
What do you want to accomplish through me in the next year? Lord, show to me everything that I need to prepare myself. Daddy, please help me. Take me to that place of my next higher level of greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that I've done that is making me to look like I'm retrogressing. Holy Ghost, tonight, today, oh Lord, deliver me. Talk to the Lord, deliver me. What's where I've done, mistakes I've made, that's making me to retrogress. Lord, deliver me this afternoon. Deliver me. Don't let me go back home the same way I came here. I don't want to retrogress anymore. I don't want to ex experience any backward movement. Father, take me forward. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to experience any more backward motion. Holy Ghost, you are a progressive God. Take me higher, Lord. Let me progress in my destiny work. In the name of Jesus, help me, O oh Lord. Separate me from those things that are holding me bound, that are not making me to progress. Separate me from those things. Be it spiritual, physical, whatever nature of issue they are, that let there be a separation. In the name of Jesus, every weight that I'm carrying that is weighing me down and not letting me to progress, Father, separate me from those weights. In the name of Jesus, thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, o Lord. You are a progressive God. You said to Abraham, I will make you great. You said you will make Isaac great, greater. You will make Jacob exceedingly great. You are a progressive God. Lord, Anything that I will do that will make me to continue to experience any period of retrogression. Father, Lord God, deliver me today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Lord, we bless your name this afternoon. You are the King of glory. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Without you, O oh Lord, we cannot go to the next level. Without you, O oh Lord, we cannot fulfill destiny. O oh Lord, we are asking this afternoon that, O oh Lord, you will take us to that place of greatness. In the name of Jesus, is there anything in our lives that is, O oh Lord, militating against your promises for us? Father, Lord God, let there be a separation. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that is causing us all a backward movement. O oh Lord, tonight, O oh Lord, that it deliver us in the name of of Jesus. Let there be a separation, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we look up to the hill from where is coming our help. Father, come and help us. Take us by your hand, O Lord. Lead us in the way of righteousness. Adadi, O Lord, and let us come back to glorify your name. Thank you, everlasting King. Glory be unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house. If you are in the house and you have your tithes this afternoon, please prepare your tithes and come forward. And while we are getting our tithes ready, I just want to an, uh, announce to us that our guest mi uh, minister, Brother Yemi Alafifuni, his CD is on the table in the um, in the hallway, if you have been blessed, you can visit that table. Begin to talk to the Lord this morning. The beginning and the end. The one who knows what tomorrow holds. Say, Father, you are the one who knows what tomorrow holds for me. And you are the one whose thoughts are always good towards me. Father, I thank you for this tight, the opportunity to give. Thank you, Daddy, for the key income that I have now. Thank you for, oh, Lord, the income and the blessings that you are still going to bring my way. Lord, I pray the grace to be obedient fully to your word. Father, grant unto me in the name of Jesus that I may be able